Hey guys, in today's video, I want to talk to you about field of view, arc seconds per pixel, and how to do a four panel mosaic with PixInsight. My name is John Robinson, the AstroTard. This is Deep Sky. So what do we mean by field of view? What the heck is an arc second per pixel? And why would I ever need to do a four panel mosaic? Well, a field of view sort of defines the area of the sky that your imaging train can capture. And that depends on a couple of factors, obviously the focal length of your telescope and also the resolution of your camera. Here's a website that you can use to determine your arc seconds per pixel. In my case, I'm at about 0 0.92 arc seconds per pixel with my imaging train here. I've got the Skywatcher Spree 120 and I've got the ZWO ASI 1600 Mono. 840 millimeter focal length and a 3.8 micrometer resolution come up with 0 0.92 arc seconds per pixel. Here's a great website that was written up by ATIC cameras on why one to two arc seconds per pixel is the optimal for imaging the night sky. But basically it comes down to this. If you're below one, then your stars are going to be bloated. If you're above two arc seconds per pixel, you're going to ask one pixel to represent one star, and that can sort of cause other anomalies the other way. So between one and two arc seconds per pixel it really is the most optimum. So that's field of view, that's arc seconds per pixel. Why would I ever need to do a four panel mosaic? Well, in my case, with 0.92 arc seconds per pixel, that translates to about 1.2 degrees by 0.9 degrees uh, imaging that I can capture in the sky. If you look, for example, at the M42, project my imaging train on top of that, you can see that I can't quite get the entire nebula with just one frame. I'm going to need to use a larger panel of frames to capture this. So let's talk about how to do that. We're going to use Sequence Generator Pro to do a four panel mosaic and then we're going to use PixInsight to stitch together those four panels. Okay, here is the Sequence Generator Pro portion. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do a framing and mosaic wizard. We're going to look for our target, in this case M42. And you notice here that it's got automatically calculated my image scale at 0.927 arc seconds per pixel based on my focal length uh, and my arc and my pixel size. And that's based on that website that I showed you. I'm also doing a 20% overlap. And this is then is the end result of one of those uh, quadrants. Now let's go ahead and do the fetch here for M42. And here's what it looks like. Let me scale down the histogram a bit so we can see it. Okay, now if I draw a little box in here, that's about the size of my image. You can see I, there's no way I can fit all of the Running Man and all of Orion in there at a one by one tile. So let's change that to be a two by two. And you can see here's the 20% overlap. Let me just center that over here in this direction. Now it's already auto calculated my rotation based on the position in the sky and where my telescope would, would be when it's taking this thing. It's saying it's at about 269 degrees or negative 90 degrees. And if I move it around like that and maybe sort of center it right there with the 20% overlap, you can see panel one, two, three, and four. And I go ahead and I, I click the create sequence. Now in my case, I do not have a rotator, so I'll disable that. But I'm going to use precise, I'm going to call this M42 mosaic. And it will go ahead and create a, uh, a sequence that looks like this. Okay, in this case, I'm only going to care about red, green, and blue. 
you know, and I'll capture, in this case, a very quick 30 seconds per filter because of, it's very bright. You can basically see this with the naked eye. You know, we'll capture just for sake of um, quickness here. We'll just do 15 targets. We'll capture that and you know, create our our sub. Now, when we're um, obviously I'm not connected here, but I, I've already run this sequence, and let me take you to it. So, this again is how you create the panels. They look like that. Okay, and when you're done, let's go to Let's go to the folder here. So I've captured uh, for panel one, I got blues, greens, and reds, uh, 45 total. So I did the 15 subs for each one. Then I've got the panel two in there, panel threes, and the panel fours. Okay, so all said and done, we have 159 uh, subs for the four panels red, green, and blue. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is, is bring in your red, your green, and your blue. Here's the red, here's the green, here's the blue for panel one, right? I've got a lot of vignetting in here because poor calibration, and it was very bright. I think when the moon was actually out when I shot this. Um, so you can see there's panel one. And then I integrated those together in just a simple, it looks like that. There's panel one. Here's panel two, panel three, and panel four. So those are the four different panels, okay? The other thing that I did to get rid of that noise, I created a false flat to just clean that up a little bit. Let me show you what that looks like. So I created a false flat. I'm not gonna go into how I did that, but basically I applied this pixel math magic to it. So if you take, for example, this RGB2 image and you, you multiply it by the mean of the flat divided by the flat, and you do that for each of the channels, you end up with something that looks like this. You can see it's done a little bit of cleanup already. It's cleaned up that vignetting quite a bit by just doing that little magic formula there. And uh, I can't remember somebody out there on the internet that showed us how to do that, but that's where I got that tip. Anyway, so that is what I call the RGB 22, RGB 11, 33, and 44. So those are the cleaned up subs. Okay, so now I'm at this stage. So I'm gonna do that uh, image analysis plate solving. So we're gonna do here on RGB 11, script, image analysis, image solver. Okay, when this comes up, I'm going to type in here and do a search for M42. And I'm being mindful that, you know, here's my resolution, arc seconds per pixel, based on the, you know, the camera size of 3.8 for the ZWO. And then when I do that, that's going to apply. I won't do it because I've already done it. But that's going to apply to this image that was open, a FITS header calculation for the WCS. And what it does... Let's look at the FITS header. So if I look at RGB11, FITS header, what it's done is, is it's created uh, at the very end here the position of this image relative to that four panel mosaic. So that's the, w that's the WCS header. And if you, by default, the images don't come with it. So this is what they look like by default. You don't have any of that information in there. So you have to actually run that script that I told you about to get that. Okay, after you've done that for each of the RGB 11s, 22s, 33s, and 44s, then you have WCS header information for each of these. Mosaic by coordinates. So that's another script. Utilities, mosaic by coordinates. Okay, and here I'm going to add a couple of things from Windows. I'm going to say grab my... 11, 22, 33, and 44. And when I click OK on that thing, it's going to create, it's going to create this. So you can see RGB 11 registered. Now there's RGB 11 in the number one quadrant location of that four panel. And then similarly, here's RGB 22 in the second position, 33 in the third position, 
and 44 in the fourth position. Okay, so those essentially, that script uses the WCS coordinates to move the image relative to its position and also does a slight rotation to compensate for the fact that my telescope is slightly rotated during the photograph session, photography session. Okay, the last step is we go to process, image integration, gradient merge mosaic. Now from here, you have to have saved these files off manually. You go out and find them, and you find those registered ones, 11, 22, 33, 44, add those guys. Now, when I click the button on here to apply global, it's going to do this. It's going to stitch those four quadrants together using the 20% overlap. And then when what I did from this is I, I rotated it and clipped it off to get rid of the blacks on the corner like that. And I cleaned it up by creating a luminous layer. I did an extraction on the lightness and created a loom channel and then used that loom channel to darken the background. So this by no means is a completed image. It's a quick and dirty image, but nevertheless, here it is. You can see now the steps to do that four panel mosaic. Well, that's it guys. That's how you do a four panel mosaic. The keys to remember are the framing and mosaic wizard in Sequence Generator Pro, calibrating, registering, and integrating all of your panels in PixInsight, then running two scripts to apply the WCS headers to each of the panels, and then reposition them correctly within the right quadrant. And finally, integrate them together with Gradient Merge Mosaic. Well, we'll see you next time. We'll do another fun video. And enjoy the night sky.